Hello everyone, this is Viroz Nada. In this video, we will study uh, stiffness method. We will see what is the meaning of stiffness method. To understand stiffness method, we have to recall the flexibility methods. What is the meaning of flexibility method and what we have learned in the flexibility method. In the flexibility method, we have learned the flexibility coefficient. And herein we have to recall what is the definition of flexibility in the context of structural analysis. So in the context of structural analysis, the definition of flexibility is displacement due to unit force. Displacement due to unit force. Okay, so displacement has two terms. Uh, it has rotation and also it has deflection. So when you are determining rotation, you have to apply unit force in terms of unit moment. In terms of unit moment. And when you are finding deflection, uh, you have to apply unit force. So this is the meaning of flexibility. Uh, displacement due to unit force. It, if you are finding rotation, we have to apply unit moment. If you are finding deflection, you have to apply unit force. And you see the stiffness, sorry, the flexibility matrix, it depends on the, the size of the flexibility matrix. It depends on number of coordinates in the structure. Number of coordinates in the structure. For example, if you have two coordinates in the structure, the size of the flexibility matrix will be 2 by 2 and it will be uh, like this F11, F21, F12, F22. So we will try to understand what is the meaning of this F11, F12, F21, F22. F11, so this one, the one at the left, it implies uh, displacement and the one at the right implies the unit force. Okay, so the meaning of F11 is unit displacement a displacement at 1 due to unit force at 1. F21 displacement at 2 due to unit force at 1. F12 displacement at 1 due to unit force at 2. So this is the meaning of the flexibility matrix. So we, as of now, we understood the meaning of uh, flexibility, the definition of the flexibility. Now we can uh, go for the understanding of stiffness matrix. Okay, stiffness method and stiffness matrix. So first we will try to understand the definition of stiffness in the structural analysis context. I will tell you before defining the stiffness, I will tell you stiffness matrix is equal to inverse of flexibility matrix. You will see how it is so. The meaning of stiffness is displacement, sorry, force required, force required to produce, to produce unit displacement unit displacement now you see displacement uh, here we are we are seeing the unit displacement in the flexibility uh, coefficient we are seeing the unit force we are applying the unit force in the stiffness method we want to see the unit displacement okay so see displacement cannot be produced it is the byproduct of the force. So we have to apply a force such that it will produce unit displacement. And again, uh, displacement has two terms. We have rotation and we have deflection. Okay. In order to cause unit rotation, you must know how much moment is required to produce unit rotation in order to have unit deflection you must know how much force is required 
to produce unit deflection and again the size of the stiffness matrix it depends on number of coordinates number of coordinates if the coordinates are 2 the size of the stiffness matrix will be 2 by 2 if the coordinates are 3 the size of the stiffness matrix will be 3 by 3 so just i will take a continuous beam continuous beam it is like this okay so it has two coordinates you have rotation at b this is coordinate number one and here you have rotation at c this is a coordinate number two so the size of the stiffness matrix will be two by two and the elements that will come in the stiffness matrix will be k11 k21 k12 k22 k11 you see this the the elements at the left side indicates force and the element at the right side indicate displacement okay so k11 denotes force required i will write this force required to produce to produce unit deflection unit sorry displacement unit displacement at 1 okay in the same way k12 force required at 1 to produce unit displacement at 2 k21 force required at coordinate 2 to produce unit displacement at coordinate 1 likewise k22 force required at 2 to produce unit displacement at 2 To understand more about stiffness and stiffness coefficient, uh, I will take a propped cantilever okay, and I will apply moment at the prop. I will apply clockwise couple at the prop and because of the application of the clockwise, the propped cantilever will hog. It will hog like this. Okay, So there will be some rotation at b and that rotation is theta b so already we have learned the relation between the applied moment and the rotation that is developed because of the applied moment so this relation we have learned in the analysis of uh, moment distribution method if you do not remember i will share my video in the description box wherein i have explained uh, I have derived the relation between the applied moment and the rotation. Okay, so the relation between the applied moment and the rotation that is developed because of the applied moment is 4 EI by L. So what stiffness says, we need to find that moment which will produce theta b equal to one force required to produce unit displacement moment required to produce unit rotation okay so if you put theta b equal to 1 so how much moment is required moment equal to 4 ei by l so this much moment is required at b to produce unit rotation at b in moment distribution method itself when you apply a moment at a particular joint some moment is produced at the far end and it depends on the end condition of the far end. If the end condition of the far end is fixed, then some moment is developed at the far end. If the end condition of the far end is fixed, sorry, if the end condition of the far end is roller or hinged, no moment is developed at the far end. In our case, we are applying moment at B, clockwise moment at B, and some moment is developed at the far end because far end is fixed. And that moment is 50% of the applied moment. And this moment is developed because of this moment, you see, there is no rotation at A. Okay. So, uh, in stiffness method, this moment is 4 EI by L. And some moment is developed at the far end. And that moment is 2 EI by L. 
derive a very important formula in the stiffness method. By using that formula, uh, you shall be able to determine the displacement of the structures. So once you know the displacement of the structures, you shall be able to determine the end moments and you shall be able to analyze the structure by using slope deflection equation. Okay, so to derive that formula, I will take a simply supported beam and I will apply a couple anti-clockwise couple, anti-clockwise bending moment at B. And because of the application of this moment, the beam will sag and you will have some rotation at A and B. Rotation at A is theta A and rotation at B is theta B. So theta A and theta B are caused because of the uh, anti-clockwise couple at B. What I will do, I will keep the same load and I will change the nature of the support. Uh, I will make A as fixed and also B as fixed. So the simply supported beam is converted into fixed beam. Okay. And the loading is same. The couple is there. The applied couple is there at A. So what will happen? There will not be any rotation at A and B. There will be dis displacement. Okay, It will displace like this. But there will not be any rotation at A and B. So why there is no rotation at B? Because you have some resisting moment. So this is the applied moment. Because of the applied moment, you have some rotation. As soon as you make B fixed, you have the resisting moment. And this resisting moment will not allow uh, the rotation to develop. So the M is the applied moment and P is the resisting moment. Both should be equal and opposite. Okay. So if you add M, that is the applied moment plus P, that is the resisting moment. If you add, it should be equal to zero in a, to, to have the equilibrium of joint P. Okay. So already we know what is M. Uh, the relation between m and theta m equal to k into theta what is k stiffness uh, of this joint and the stiffness of this joint is 4 ei by l into theta okay so what i will do i will just substitute this m in this formula m equal to k into theta plus p equal to zero so here you only have one coordinate but in the structure in the big structure or in a structure where where you have n number of coordinates so the k will be uh, k matrix because you have n number of coordinates and then you have displacement matrix because theta is the displacement of the structure displacement matrix displacement matrix is denoted by d plus p matrix P is the resisting moment, but here we will call it as joint load in the context of stiffness method. It is called as joint load equal to zero. Okay. So I told you whatever formula we shall be deriving, uh, we will calculate displacement of the structure from that formula. So D has to be calculated. Okay. To keep D at the, uh, at the left side, D equal to k will go into the right hand side and p will also go into the right hand side so when p go into the right hand side it will become negative minus p minus uh, matrix of joint load into inverse of k inverse of stiffness matrix see p will go at the denominator but when uh, when you uh, take that denominator into numerator, you have to make it inverse. Okay. So displacement matrix equal to a joint matrix, joint load matrix into inverse of stiffness matrix. So by using this formula, this formula is very, very important. By using this formula, you shall be able to determine the displacement of the structures. So once you know the displacement of the structure, uh, you will be able to determine the end moment. Okay, so I will just give you the formula by using which formula we will be able to determine the end moment. For example, this is the continuous beam that you have. Okay, you will have some load 
I'll not define the load because I'm just telling you the formula and by using that formula, you will be able to determine the end moment. So we are end moments are M A B, M B A, M B C, and M C B. So in all the displacement method, including stiffness method, you are defining end moments like this. Okay. So M A B equal to M F A B plus four E I by L theta A plus 2 Ei by L theta B. So in this case theta is 0 because A is fixed a support and you will have theta B. From where you will get theta B? You will get theta B from this formula. Okay. Displacement matrix equal to minus of joint load matrix into inverse of stiffness matrix. So by using this formula you will get the displacement of all the joints. Okay, so MBA equal to MFBA. By the way, MFAB and MFB are the fixed end moment and it depends on the load applied on that particular span. So you know uh, different formulas of fixed end moment. Okay. MFBA plus 2EI by L theta A plus 4EI by L theta B. Similarly, M B C end moment for B C equal to M F B C plus 4 E I by L theta B plus 2 E I by L theta C. So fixed end moment uh, you will get from the loading condition and theta B and theta C you will get from this formula. This formula is very, very important in the stiffness method. Thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you very much.